Hey cats, it's Ed Budge, your midsole man here. Four shoes up for discussion in today's running shoe, yay or nay. Placing these under the microscope to tell you whether I'm gonna be picking them up or not for review. I'm not saying that these are treasures or they're trash, but some shoes are gonna fit into the rotation better than others. I might leave a few of them for the other shoe tube masters out there. Four shoes today are the Solomon Aeroglide. We also have the Hoka Transport X special ASICS shoe which is out only in Japan at the moment, the S4. And last but not least, by viewer recommendation, the New Balance Fuel Cell SC Trainer V2. Lots to get through today, let's get to it. Thanks for joining me for the running shoe yay or nay for today. Stacks of stuff, so let's get to it quickly. Hit that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up like, it really helps out. Danke schön. First up today is the Solomon Aeroglide. We got 37 mil of heel stack in this beast. I think this is Solomon's attempt at a super trainer really, certainly with that stack height. They're using their energy foam material here in the midsole. Certainly seems to be a more squashy affair. A 10 mil drop and a weight of 254 grams in the sample standard size. That means we're coming in round about where we want to be in terms of the shoe's heft and weight. I mean, no one really wants a heavy shoe, do they? I mean, it's not make or break for a trainer. Perhaps if you're talking race shoes, you always want it to be on the lighter side. But if you're going to offer up a very light training base shoe, nobody's going to turn their nose up at it. I would assume that the shoe has a built-up cup around the heel, as it seems much higher than the 37 millimeters that we have specified here. There seems to be a very flexible mesh in the toe box area of that upper and then a more built up padded heel section so Solomon's still sticking to their kind of trademark stuff there in the upper and this setup will be very familiar to those of you who that have some of those super trainers that have been released recently Things like the Super Blast or perhaps the Puma Magnify Nitro 2. Things that are attracting me to this shoe over some of the others though are that Solomon Contra Grip outsole rubber. In the autumn and winter that's going to come in really useful, certainly for me on some of my local trail routes. Poor traction are things that make a shoe simply unusable for me when it comes to those sort of wet and very grimy runs. Some of my local routes have got very varied terrain so I need some reasonable outsole at 150 big ones it's coming in a little more expensive than something like the Boston 12 and this is looking more similar I suppose to something like the Triumph 21 or the Magnify Nitro 2 that sort of price range the Puma of course coming in a little bit cheaper there I'm gonna say a nay on this one at least for the time being I want to see some other reviews before I even consider it I want to see some more information about that foam itself to see what properties it has my super trainer shoe rotation is very very <laughs> congested right now so I'll leave this one on the uh, back burner for a little while and see what people make of it. Shoe 2. Next is the Hoka Transport X. Straight off the bat, this one sounds alarm bells for me. Supposedly a running, walking and lifestyle model. Now, I see people wearing running shoes all the time and they're not doing any running. Sometimes not even doing any walking, in fact. So I think you can pretty much use any shoe for whatever you like, really. If you're going to brand it as a crossover thing, that kind of baffles me somewhat. There's a few times where I wander to work in a pair of running shoes or something and I certainly don't need a carbon plate. And we do have one here in the Transport Transport X. In fact, I can't think of anything worse actually than having a carbon plate where you're walking. It's a forked plate here and we have a super critical midsole. Upper looks a little like an on-running shoe to me. And weirdly, there is another transport model that's about £40 cheaper on the Hoka website. The front of the rubber and the midsole section there looks a little bit like a Converse shoe, I suppose. Or maybe like a Superstar or something from Adidas. Quite the mishmash of use cases here. Though I can see it appearing to swathes of casual users hopping on the on-running Cloudtech wagon. I did see a grown man wearing full on-running kit the other day and some shoes in a restaurant with his family. It was a little bit weird, but you know, if that's the way you want to roll, full kit and all that, yeah. 160 smackaroonies seems a harsh punishment to the wallet for such a shoe. I believe there's probably better trainers out there that don't have a carbon plate, and if you're just going to be doing daily milling around, then could save yourself some cash. I don't think you really need loads of reflective bits on a shoe anyway. Just wear a reflective jacket or a hat or something. I think that's probably going to do better in a headlamp. There you go. But, you know, there's probably people out there that want a shoe with all these things built in. I can't play a shoe that you can use for everything, but they're probably the people that watch crazy people talking about running shoes on YouTube. That's me. But I don't want it. 
It's an A on the Poker Transport X. If you're a avid watcher of the channel but you haven't done so yet, help us out by hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up like. It helps to elevate us out to more runners. Thank you soon. She three, I'm going to say thanks to Stefan for giving me a heads up and reminding me about this one. Stefan reckons we're now more likely to receive a rest of the world release on the special Japan only ASIC shoe, the S4. This has only been available in Japan since the Tokyo Marathon earlier this year. We have Flight Foam Turbo here in the midsole. It bears some resemblance to the original Metaspeed Sky release from a few years back. And apparently this one's coming in at round about the same price as the ASIC Super blast at least in japan now the super blast is one of my shoes of the year so far i think it's absolutely fantastic don't forget no plate in that shoe this s4 could be a good option for those who don't want to stump up the full amount for the a6 metaspeed sky plus or the edge plus but do want a really great and light race shoe with that flight foam turbo the s4 name apparently means speed stability safety and sub four indicating perhaps they've kind of tuned the shoe for a sub four marathon attempts it also appears in key features here a wider surface area of the shoe against the original metaspeed sky series so you got a little bit more width there in the heel and certainly in that arch area just might make the shoe a little bit more usable for those who are heel striking perhaps not that's a bad thing a huge percentage of people do apparently more than any other type of foot strike a similar mesh upper to the s4 against the current models that we have in the uk even those perforated laces make an appearance and we do have a full length carbon plate here in the s4 so it's certainly tuned to be more like a faster speed sort of race shoe i suppose asics literally making a more durable and resilient shoe here too as you can see the rubber stretches back into and around the heel I haven't seen that in many shoes of recent times certainly branded as a race option this could be the answer to many runners big issues with some of the super shoes that really take a pounding to the foam in that back area of the shoe. Some of the more energy return based foams tear up back there pretty hard. The S4 could negate some of that problem, just could grant us a little bit more longevity. I've always liked the profile of these A6 race shoes. They look beautiful to me. We do appear to have two different colorways here of the S4. We have the hazard green and white, along with the diva pink and white too. I think I prefer the pink and white version this time round. Let's just hope, fingers crossed, that it does actually get released over here. I think if they stick with the pricing, it could be an excellent option for those who want something with a little bit more width there to the landing platform. So I'm well up for testing this one out. Very interesting shoe. ASICs just try lots of different things, you know. Some of them work really, really well, like that Super Blast. I think this could be one of those shoes that works exceptionally well. And it's a bit of an upgrade from the Magic Speed 3 as well here. We've got, obviously, their top-line flagship phone. It's a yay for the S4 from ASICs if it comes over to these shores. Last one up today, shoe four. It's the New Balance Fuel Cell SC Trainer V2. Now, I'm going to try and put this one to bed, really. I've received loads of requests to review this shoe, but there's a few things about it that I'm just really not too keen on, especially the huge price, £209. That's a big, big gamble for me, really. Buy lots of shoes in for the channel for review, but that's a colossal price to pay on a shoe that I don't think is going to be that much better than the V1. I've seen a few other reviews on this one and they're all saying the same thing. A little wary, to be honest, after I tried the V1, it really didn't produce anything for me at all. The foam is just so compressive. Fuel Cell is just one of those very soft midsole materials. Yes, you had a carbon plate in it. Yes, there was a huge stack in the heel. Now in the V2, apparently they've reduced the stack there, so you're kind of paying more for less i didn't find that much energy return in the v1 it was an okay type recovery shoe but i don't need a carbon plate in my recovery shoe outsole rubber wasn't great either in the v1 some of the areas of rubber almost felt recessed into the midsole foam and that huge cutout that we have that void just collected up loads and loads of debris and grit on my local roots it made it completely unusable in fact on loose stones and gravel at 228 grams or 10 ounces 
in the sample size, that is more than what I've got in my pair of the A6 Super Blast in a UK 11. So it begs the question, do I need a plate and all that squashy fuel cell foam? Probably not, especially for £209, which is 20 quid more than the A6 Super Blast. Fuel cells are not foam, you know, it's just so compressive. I never felt that much return from it in the RC Elite 2 either. The fuel cell Rebel 2 just felt like a sort of cut down version of the invincible run to me and then this shoe which is meant as some sort of long run recovery type effort at race shoe money that just seems odd to me i can't really justify this one less foam middle of the road outsole grip from the v1 at least they seem to have changed up the lacing system this time there's a few more eyelets which was a big problem on the v1 so it's a hard nay for me on the sc trainer version 2 from new balance that's all four shoes in today's yay or nay let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments have i got it wrong on any of these put me right musical interlude time recently i've managed to pick up some fantastic bargains on some vinyl a few albums that i perhaps missed out on or hadn't picked up over the last couple of years one of those albums which i got for a great price of 20 quid was fever dreams parts one through to four from johnny marr this is an album that I just completely sort of overlooked and I haven't really had a chance to sort of dig into, but the more and more I've listened to it, the more I've enjoyed it. Some of the key tracks to test out and listen to are Tenement Time, and I really enjoy Night and Day as well. Some Smith's vibes about that one really, certainly in terms of the production, but on Fever Dreams what you can expect is a more synth-laden sound. Nice crisp and clear production on all Johnny Marr's material, but especially this album. There's about 16 tracks to dig into, so it could be a really great one for a long run i think it's about an hour and 13 minutes or so across the whole album so yeah put that on a couple of times on your long run and you've got some interesting tracks to check out not just your typical sort of indie rock stuff some really interesting musical melodies and arrangements to a lot of the tracks here go and check it out guys fever dreams parts one through to four from johnny ma thanks for tuning in as usual people it's always appreciated please do hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications too. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.